And look at these gorgeous big leaves. This is commonly known as a dinner plate Hoya. <music> friends welcome back to sunflower hill this is um tina and um this is part two of the tour of my um indoor growing spaces so today we're going to have a look at the spaces in the kitchen and in the, my kids um little greenhouse that they've got in their room and in this bigger greenhouse that i've got in the lounge room now i'm actually refilming this because i've done a lot of changes in here um i've actually set up a greenhouse out in the bus and i'm going to do I know I keep promising I keep promising the bus revamp video but um it is coming I promise and that this is part of it because I've set up a big greenhouse out there um and I've put moved quite a few of the plants that were in here and quite perfectly happy here but I was just really really running low on space and um I also wanted to do a couple of things a little bit different in this greenhouse so I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour now of the revamped indoor greenhouse and show you some of the changes I've made. We'll also have a look at the kitchen and the, um, the, the kitchen, the plants in the kitchen and the, the, the um, indoor growing space that my kids have in their, their room, which is another greenhouse. <music> Okay, a quick little look at the plants in my kitchen. The light's not great in here either. They do have a grow light over this, but it's pink, so not the nicest to film. This guy's just little spathophyllum, little variegated pea silly, nice little plant. Um, then this little fella is a Calathea rufabarba. Um, this came from the kid's dad, my kid's dad's place, because uh, it wasn't doing too well there, and it's much happier here. So that's very nice. I really like taking plants that look unhappy and making them happy and sort of like, you know, bringing it back. It's kind of satisfying. This little guy here is just a nice little Raffidophora decursiva, also known as a dragon's tail. They can grow very long leaves uh, with multiple splits, sort of like a feather sort of shape or dragon's tail, um, up to a metre long. I don't think that's going to happen to these ones, but they're very cute. Um, show the base of him. They're very cute crawling plants and they can climb as well they can really get going when they want to then I've got this fella up here is um, oh, one of my favorite plants really it's a mam mammy eye or mamie I'll put the spelling on the screen anyway you can see next to my hand big beautiful leaves this is actually meant to be a crawler technically but you can see behind it it's on a pole it's very happy it took off itself it sort of it was didn't want to crawl it just went and I thought oh, all right fine you want a pole I'll give you a pole buddy so that's her she's very happy on her pole and you can see in the window behind there um, we have this gorgeous one so this is a philodendron splendid um, really really beautiful plant it's a cross between a melanochrysum and uh, is it gloriosum? Oh god, I'll have to look it up. That's just slipped my brain. I'll put it on the screen, but I think so. <laughs> anyway, much hardier and more resilient than either of the parent plants. Um, I'll just grab another of her leaves. Look at this, and it's got the real. Oh, bring her into the shot. Got the real melanochrysum sort of long shape and dark leaf so really gorgeous plant really hardy great house plant there she is down here got a little um, baby pilea peperomoides and I won't linger on that one too long I'll show you the mother plant in the other room this one is a begonia bowery and I strongly recommend if you like begonias and want to keep begonias in your house but don't want all the drama of that begonias can bring these are just fantastic and i mean oh no i just just knocked the pilea down sorry little guy pick him up he'll be all right there hardy but just look at the beautiful leaves i mean that's stunning um you know really cheap and common plant but absolutely gorgeous and so hardy so hardy um largely because it's rhizomatous rhizomatous begonias are there's the rhizomes down there 
super super easy to grow super hardy super resilient and this guy's in the same sort of family this is a uh, sunset blaze this one's called it's just a, a commercial hybrid but beautiful beautiful plants and yeah really nice easy to take care of this little fella here <laughs> is surprising it's a vanilla orchid and yes it is the plant that um, that you get vanilla beans from the vanilla that we eat so it's kind of growing all through here um, comes from over there from that pot there but it's really really happy and resilient I this area has no heating or anything it is a tropical plant but it's actually very tough and resilient even in my you know not hugely hot and it gets quite cold in here some sometimes in winter and it's just thriving it's just going mental <laughs> I might have to try and stake it up somewhere but I don't know it seems happy <laughs> just being feral in the jungle so yeah that's that's one to try it's a really gorgeous plant and look with the aerials on there you go with the aerials on that guy just beautiful and over in this corner we've got a little Hoya polyneura another super tough hardy plants all the plants in this spot are really hardy um, and this is beautiful too this is a syngonium goldie beautiful plant and this here is just a little sansevieria beautiful plant uh, the humming noise here is from my fish tank so don't mind that <laughs> The next area I wanted to show you is this greenhouse, which is actually in my younger kids' bedroom. Um, it's again, it's exactly the same type of greenhouse as the one I showed you before, so I won't linger too long, but it's got a completely different light system. It uses, um, they are still LEDs, but they're strip, they're in a, um, a long strip. So they're very handy because they actually connect together. Right down the bottom there, they connect. They connect there, that cord goes under those two boxes and connects to the bottom of this one. And then it comes out, it comes out up the top. Um, and there's just one switch here now you can so the switch is on the outside the plug is on the outside all the electrical parts are on the outside of that unit so you've got all the the um humidity and again i'm just zipping that up you've got all the humidity kept inside there and these are mostly house plants but i'll show you the food plants i'm starting down there um, but the humidity is kept inside this little mini greenhouse and again this was a $40 greenhouse that I bought from the internet so I'm going to show you the um, the little plants I have growing in the food plants I have started in here the beginnings of my summer crops but I'm going to turn the grow lights off because they um, they flash they uh, strobe so so these are um, capsicum plants and they're extremely you really can't see why they're right they're right next to the grow light house plants are very different generally are very different from the food plants that we grow because food plants are seasonal which means that they have to do their entire life cycle in one season um, these I have, have you can some plants you can keep growing longer capsicums tomatoes eggplants you can overwinter those and the plant will start again in the summer all of this depends on your climate obviously but in my climate which is a cool temperate these certainly will die off outside over winter but in a warm sheltered spot they will grow through winter and if you want to get them started from seed nice and early this is the way to do it so they're on a heat mat again down there that's the heat mat and they're on a, just a bucket lid so I can water them there and right next to these grow lights these grow lights are some of them are 10 watts and some of them are 20 watts so these two in fact, I think these are 10 watts. So these two lights, one here and one on that side. Where is it? One on that side there. Do this entire cabinet for very, very little electricity. And in fact, this particular greenhouse only has this one 30 watt heat mat. So that's very little, very little. 
and they're thriving obviously yet another growing space in my lounge room is this uh fish tank it's bigger than it looks it's um i think about i think it's two and a half feet long so that's well, not quite a metre wide, uh, long, or about a metre. That looks wider than a metre. Anyway, it's big. And it's um, glaring here, so you can't really see in it very well. I'll take the lid off and we'll have a look inside. It's um, mainly begonias, but there's also <laughs> there's also quite a few other feral things floating around in there. I, do I have this red light over it, and I've also got this El Cheapo little $15 <laughs> grow light from... Um, from e Bay on it as well but let's uh, turn off the red light so you can actually see what we're looking at and have a look inside okay so that's actually still from the outside but without the red light just with the white light on it it's actually quite hard to see the glass does reflect and glare but it's really beautiful and it's something I really like <laughs> I don't know if, if the the camera's picking up the guinea fowl noise but they're really noisy and I've still got shearing going on next door so there's an awful lot of noise um, been like that for days it's meant to rain tomorrow so they have to stop shearing <laughs> hooray hooray for me not so hooray for them I don't care at this point <laughs> okay let's take the lid off this tank and have a look inside because it is really rather lovely in there. I really love this tank. And yeah, I, I do have some random begonia, ah, begonias. I do have some random um, philodendrons and things, propagations. Oh, there's a little gigas <laughs> wandering around in there. But I also have different begonias and this philodendron uh, bob C. So there's quite a few random things. I want to pull out all of the, the, um, the philodendrons and there's a a uh, oh work brain a um oh mandula thank you brain it stumped it up eventually it's a mandula pothos back there that's getting really quite big beautiful leaves and i want to take it out propagate it and put it on a pole um there's some sort of philodendron up there i don't even know what it is and there's a little brantianum hiding in there just there but let's have a look inside okay so this fella up here let's start from the top is actually a um it is <laughs> it is an overgrown and completely feral and i thought was dead uh, brantianum thank you brain it's a brantianum i thought it was long dead it was actually on a completely different <laughs> pole it, I think it was on a bit of bark or something back there and I thought it was long dead but it's just kind of reverted a bit to this sort of more basic I don't know sort of looks a bit like a Hartley fillo or something like that a heteraceum but it's just kind of green and um <laughs> kind of whoops badly neglected it's obviously trying to escape the top of the tank so of course the thing I need to do is take it out and propagate it I just need to sort out some of the propagation boxes because they um they have a lot of stuff in them and a lot of begonias all right so begonias I really want this tank to be for begonias that need humidity but not extra warmth um, and there's a few of them in this tank the rexes are so like that they really don't like um, dry air so this flower here belongs to obviously a begonia and it is this one it's a stunner it's hard to tell just how big the, the leaves on this this is not a big leaf on this but look at them they're black and shiny they they have a bit of um, oh, <laughs> words are not working today I don't know why they they have a bit of velvetiness to them thank you brain stumping that up they have a bit of velvetiness to them and a real sheen they're just gorgeous and they get sort of twice this size the plant in here did have these leaves twice this size but I had to chop it um I had to chop it up it was taking over the whole tank and it was smothering out the other plants in here the other begonias 
So it's a no ID, or I bought it as a no ID. Um, it may be begonia black coffee, may not be. But that's what these gorgeous flowers here are from. And I do have lots of propagations of this plant. It's a very vigorous, happy plant. Other begonia in here is this one. And oh my god, I love hairy plants. I suppose look away for a few minutes if you don't. But look at the hairiness. He's just so beautiful. And here's his label. So he is a begonia Bill Morris. Um, it's a, a rhizomatous begonia, so they're just so hardy. I just absolutely adore this plant. I've had it, oh, I don't know, a few months. Um, but yeah, really hardy in this tank anyway. The, the hairiness, I just love it. And the red, combination of the red hairy leaves with that sort of shape is just, oh, I just love it. Um, and there's more begonias in here. This one down here is absolutely gorgeous um it's got a oh, look at the sheen on the sheen on the leaves it's just stunning this is another rhizomatous rhizomatous it's another rhizomatous begonia that is really hardy and um or in in this sort of tank it's really hardy um oh i'm i'm really sorry i'm blanking out on names today i just don't know what's going on with my brain um it's got something to do with colour in the night. I'll put it on the screen. I do know all of these names. I'm just just totally blanking out. I'll remember as soon as I stop filming in here. Um, and this flower here is from the Bill Morris, the, the hairy one. So that's happy. They're all really happy in here. I love the flowers. They're just so good. They're adorable. Um, Gosh, that's annoying me that that name's eluding me. It's doing really well down there. It's super happy. It's got something to do with colour in the name. Chroma something. Oh, look, I'll put it on the screen. And this is another bit of that um, Prantianum. <laughs> it's got crazy in here. It's going crazy. But it's, it's just such a weird one because I thought it was long dead. But it's just going crazy. And something else that's kind of just doing its own thing is this mycans philodendron mycans it's just a header in mycans it's kind of just wandering around in there what else is in there oh my goodness there's more phyllo uh, more begonias under there then there's this philodendron bob c here i really like this guy and he's quite happy in this tank um but he's getting too big for it. And I actually, it's not what I want to grow in here. I just actually want this to be a tank full of begonias. All right, now further down here, there are more begonias. Again, I've completely forgotten the name of this fellow, but I will put it on the screen. And there's one of its bigger leaves. It feels really floppy. Whoops, excuse me. Huge begonia oh, down here. There, it's not Manaus, is it? Oh, again, I'll put it on the screen. I don't know what my brain's doing today, but this feels. Oh gosh, where is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's floppy because that leaf has died off because it's got no water. Ah. Uh -huh. All right. Anyway, beautiful leaf. I'll go and propagate this one. Oh, that's why I'm not upset about it. Uh, where's the leaf gone now? I better find it. The rest of the plant is here. Oh, here's that leaf. All right, I will need to obviously um, rehydrate that and then I'll leaf propagate it. That's fine. It'll be it'll grow well from a leaf prop. But it's a beautiful begonia. I'll put the name on the screen. Um, glad I looked in there because I have been watering in here, but obviously I haven't got down to that one. Problem is, it's such a mess that. I don't know where pots and roots are and water tends to get just sort of bounce off all of these leaves. Um, they're all in individual pots. I'm not really game to plant them into a substrate in the bottom of a terrarium because um, I just, yeah, I'm not game to. I like them in individual pots and I can look after them individually um, and they have different needs. And if a terrarium goes wrong, where things are planted in a substrate, then everything's going to go wrong um, and you lose flexibility. In here 
is my Philodendron Gigas. I showed you the other leaf from the outside. Again, this one is in there somewhere. I really don't know exactly where it, <laughs> the pot is. I'm going to do some watering after this and make sure I at least water all the pots. But I need to spend a day, and it, it will take a day to go through this properly and um, pull out things I don't want there in the, anymore and propagate them. I just need to be sure that I have a place for them to go. So I need to go through my prop boxes and um, make some room. And this is that absolutely beautiful Mandula pothos. It's so pretty. It's just a um, form of of the um, Epipremnum aureum, so just the common pothos. But it's not it's not technically a pothos. It's an Epipremnum, but that's what it's known as. Um, so it's absolutely beautiful plant. And the leaves started getting quite big as it went up this pole. Just another job. I want to put it on a proper pole and see if I can get it to size up and have really gorgeous leaves, which I know it is capable of doing. And there it is, more of it hiding in that corner there. Such a beautiful plant. All right, another big plant in here is this Syngonium chia pen. See, my brain will stump that one up. This is such a beautiful underrated plant. It is absolutely, the colors you're seeing on the leaf, that sort of blue coming through, the Glaucus blue sort of coloration, that is absolutely the color of the leaf. It's not just some sort of trick of the camera or the light. It actually is that color and it does feel very uh, sort of suede, suede sort of soft and it has the, the veins. Oh, it's just, it's a very subtly beautiful plant. It's much more pretty than um, people realise it sort of looks like a plain old syngonium. It's also really resilient and hardy. It's got new growth coming there, even though I've cut it fairly recently. So that's a beautiful one too. Um, there may be other things in there, but I really can't get in there to show you properly. So that's about it for this tank. Um, one of my favourite growing spaces in my house. but it does need some attention. I'll do a quick pan around here to show you my setup with the grow lights. This is in the lounge room, but I don't want them to strobe because I know not only is that unpleasant to look at, but it's also may trigger um, epilepsy or other conditions like that so I'll, I'll cut out anything that strobes. Once I've shown you with the grow lights I'm going to turn the grow lights off and give you a little tour of the plants. There are actually quite a few edibles that I'm growing in this greenhouse here down the bottom of this greenhouse and lots more house plants and a surprising little edible up here. <laughs> okay so that is strobing so I will try and give you a a little look at the the setup with the grow lights you can see that's one there um, and there in here in here there's one up above just up there but it, it was strobing oh there it is a long light so these lights, so all of these lights are your bar lights that you can see are all joined together they're all part of one system I might turn them off and show you the lights Okay, so those lights were strobing really badly. Um, I hope there's enough light here. I think the plants actually look better <laughs> with just the, um, the ambient light from outside uh, and a bit of light from the room. These, these are the grow lights that I use here. I also use grow lights from a friend. They're absolutely excellent, but these ones are also really good and they are pretty, pretty cheap. More than affordable, they're cheap from eBay and um, they link to each other like this and there's this the one switch that does all of this this bar up the top and these grow lights in this greenhouse in here which we will go into in a tick so there's quite a few bars in there as well so they're all on one plug which is super super handy it's it's, you know, trying to plug in that many separate lights just would not work for me. So that works really well. Anyway, let's have a look at what's here. So I've got these newest to my collection is these epiphyllums. I think they're a type of jungle cactus. I can only assume 
Um, I meant to do some research. I'll put it on the screen if they are. I think they are a type of jungle cactus. Um, very cool. Perfectly happy in a cooler climate, which is great. Um, and the other epiphyllum I have is this one here, which is called... Let me just try and get the light a bit better. This one here, which is called Curly Sue. Um, Curly Sue is epiphyllum guatemalens. And... Curly Sue is fantastic because she produces edible berries as well. So, you know, there are actually quite a few ways of growing food in your house. If you just want to grow something and have something, I find this plant particularly gorgeous, but also how cool is it? How cool is it that you get edible berries from it as well? So there are a surprising number of things you can grow in your house that will grow some kind of food apart from lettuce and greens and stuff like that. So next to Sue is this really beautiful Ripsalis and I'm just going to go out a bit and show you how long that guy is. There's Curly Sue there and I'm really sorry about the lighting. That's not ideal. But um, the grow lights were just making it impossible. But this Ripsalis has got quite long. That's my daughter's plant. That's um. Most of these guys are quote unquote just ornamentals, but they, uh, you know, they bring so much joy to my, my living space. It just, they're still of an immense value. Having this little jungle here, that it, even though I have a lot of plants outdoors um, on my little farm, but I, they, I really love these plants inside. And I actually really value having plants that I just have for the pleasure of them. So this is a Pilea peperomoides. It's an enormous mother plant. Um, that's, so this is the mother plant of that baby one in the kitchen. And you can't really quite adequately see how big this plant is, but it's, it's enormous. Um, and he's very happy here. Again, this is one, it's one I got for my daughter from um, a local nursery and it was really unhappy. It was, it was struggling. It was on its way out. Repotted it and put her in um, in much better soil and in here and she's delighted with life and has got more pups down there. So that's the stalk of the, the main stem of the mother plant and that's pups and that's how these plants reproduce. It's very, very easy to get new ones if you care for them properly. They're not that easy to get to that size. My kids love cacti so we have this great big hairy funny thing which stabbed me in the finger yesterday. Got these guys down here and there's a cute little one in there. This is a philodendron moonlight which was a swap. I did a swap. I can't remember what I swapped for that. Um, if you want a super easy and absolutely beautiful house plant and you love ferns but think they're hard, these ones, blue terrace ferns, also known as blue star ferns, they are absolutely the easiest plants they're just gorgeous they'll even even in my climate they're quite happy outside in winter on the porch super cool plant just gorgeous and super easy care super like genuinely easy and another really easy care plant is the christmas cactus down here um they are genuinely easy peasy lemon squeezy beautiful plants too I've come to really appreciate these um, some some of these succulents. And down here, there's a, a multi paddle cactus, which is just so happy down there. You wouldn't think so. Doesn't get a huge amount of light, but it's grown immensely. Uh, I guess this again is the kids. I think it had that and that, and the original paddle on it when we got it. So that's a happy little camper. And um, this is another cool plant here. This is. My younger daughter's plant this is a pregnant onion and that's how they make more pregnant onions they actually literally produce these little bulblets on the side of the mother plant hence the, the name I guess pregnant onion and then there's random little little cacti here um, and this is a plant that you'll see in another video this spathophyllum sensation variegated which I kind of rescued, which I got very cheaply. I didn't didn't rescue. It wasn't thrown out or anything, but it was it was struggling, and I bought it very cheaply from a local. 
person who was struggling with it um, and along with another plant which I'll show you in a minute and um, look at that new growth hooray so obviously it's liking its new conditions it needed a much much smaller pot a much lighter area mix I use my natural pest spray to get rid of it I'm pretty sure it had spider mites but all gone all clear and it's very happy <clears throat> and if you want to uh, see the recipe for that natural pest spray that video on these two plants on re, um, regenerating these two plants will be out soon and that will have the the um, recipe in it or if anybody really wants it let me know in the comments and I can do a video on that but it's not my recipe I can link the, the video to the original recipe and here we have probably my favorite my original Monstera Deliciosa large form you can tell it's large form um, again if you compare to the the climbing one I showed you before in the bedroom this one has very very short internodal spaces so you can see it's it's a crawler basically it has a leaf this is a node this is a node this is a node that's a node so it just has no space between nodes at all tiny bit tiny bit I mean you can propagate it has a little bit but it, it's supporting itself it's thick and immediately it's produced these leaves with big splits and even some inner fenestrations up here so that's large form so it's got these inner fenestrations here as well fenestrations are the holes that uh, holy leaf plants get and um, I believe the splits are actually just called splits I don't think it's called fenestrations until you get the holes in the middle of the leaf I'm going to start with one of my favourite plants and that is this uh, white vein philodendron gloriosum. But in Australia they're still fairly new, um, the white vein version that is, not the gloriosum itself. So I really adore this plant, she's a beauty and I have to say I think probably that, um, that philodendrons and um, Begonias are probably right up there with my favourite genus of plants. Uh, I'm not going to show you each individual plant because that would take forever. But this is a Hoya. And look at these gorgeous big leaves. This is commonly known as a dinner plate Hoya. I think it's gone through a couple of changes of name. But I'm not going to attempt to pronounce its current botanical name. I will just pop it on the screen instead. I'm going to zip through these a little bit. There's more Hoyas in there. Um, this is... A philodendron rugosum that I've grown from a well not a seed from a tiny teeny little seedling but it's now I've repotted it and moved it around a bit and it's super happy this guy up here is a calathea white fusion and there's a story there's a rehab story about her and her friend the spathophyllum which will be coming out at some point too she's doing really well in here these kind of, particularly these white fusions are very, very um, absolute humidity pigs. They absolutely have to have very high humidity. This is a new leaf that's come out in my care, so I'm really happy. These older ones, look, they're, they're ugly, but they're still functional, so I want to leave them on until a plant has plenty of new leaves because they're still photosynthesizing for the plant. So they're still of use. Video will come out on these guys quite soon. Down here and with this, I am actually showing you guys my latest plan, which is using these cat litter trays um, to keep your plants in. They are, I just don't have words for how good they are. They've just absolutely revolutionized my plant care. I know it's just cheap cat litter trays. Yeah, why would you be excited? I went and went to the cheap store and got so like a, a lot of these, like 20. <laughs> yes, I did get a funny look. From the checkout person um anyway they're absolutely brilliant because you can just water them in place and then you can you know you can take the plants out you can just take the whole thing out and water the plants and get the water out of the bottom and slide the whole thing back in or you can leave it in place and then just dip out any extra water i use um a large horse syringe to get water out of the bottom uh they they are so good they are so so good they they 
absolutely revolutionized my keeping plants in um, greenhouse situation. So that's one of the major changes I've made. This tray down here is mainly things that don't mind a bit of dimmer light, although there is another philodendron rugosum in there, which is, it's getting sufficient light. Um, but there's just a mixture of plants I'm just growing out. There's some Hoyas um, and there's some begonias in here. This is a, a um, propagation of that one we saw in the tank. They have got this, they've just got red light. They've got this grow light down here. And then this gorgeous, beautiful begonia, which is a Caribbean Corsair, if I'm not mistaken. Let me... This guy here, hello, hello puss. Someone's come to say hello. Hello, Minky. Hello. That was a mammal. Back to the plants. Um, this guy here is not happy because it was those brown bits. They're not rot or anything. They're actually just light burns. It was right under a grow light. And as I said, they don't like... They grow light to have a cheap, but actually quite strong. So this plant looks terrible. Um, but And it's not a popular plant. But I really like it. Sorry, everyone who hates it. This is an Amidrium medium variegata. And there's something in the corner there. So down here are the first leaves of this plant. And as we go up the pole, it's sort of behind this pole a little bit. But it goes right up. I've got the cat trying to climb on me. And the leaves get bigger and bigger. But this is a Philodendron melanochrysum. The leaves started off about yay big, like really small. And it was just a tiny little bent sort of stick with four leaves on it, literally had four leaves. And then it goes up the pole and they get to this size and each leaf is sizing up. So I'm really happy. This and then this sort of size, because they uh, people have a lot of trouble sizing these guys up. And then the last leaf is even bigger and that's not fully hardened off yet. So I'm not gonna touch that too much, but it's getting bigger and bigger with each leaf. The trick with them, is humidity they are another plant that is absolutely a humidity pig and people i think um don't have got turned off them because they've had trouble sizing them up um, it's because the plant will grow in ambient room humidity but it won't thrive it won't size up it won't get gorgeous um, and it won't get these stunning long leaves that the plant is known for so hot tip if you want to grow a philodendron melanochrysum and have it nice it they do really love humidity and warmth not they don't no need super heat but they like a bit of warmth here up these this is a um monstera deliciosa <laughs> this is these are actually large form uh thai constellation and i've recently got myself got hold of a very very cheap cutting of a yellow tie con so i'm very excited about that but that's the um that's the new growth point in there and in here there are some trees these are actually caucus uh persim persimmons persimmons which i bought well i bought the seeds from ebay so i'm very excited they're growing super well okay. up here we've got a row of hoyas and yes I do reuse old <laughs> coconut yogurt containers as hangers. They're the best hangers because you can water the, the um, plants in them and you don't get water on the floor. So winning. Down here, this is a hybrid philodendron. This is, they've got quite a few of the hybrids. I really love them. This is a um, philodendron majestic and it is a varicosum, oh, is it a sodoroy? I think sodoroy hybrid. I'll put it on the screen. I'll double check down here oh pride and joy people pride and joy i love this plant this is my also a philodendron it's a hairy one i love hairy plants okay so this is a philodendron squamacall not squamiferum or squamiferum but squamacall completely different plant this is hairy and has these leaf shaped leaves but i actually find the shape really beautiful and they've got a little bit of um reddish sort of coloration to them as well gorgeous plant and it's growing like a weed i buy everything all these plants i buy as weed cuttings usually or you know weed starts and this one was a really small start it was basically a rooted cutting but it's taken off absolutely happy as anything this guy here is an epipremnum uh, amplissimum 
Ferragata. It's a silver, silver something streak, stri stripe streak. Again, it will be on the screen, but it's a yellow variegated one. It's growing. It's, it's happy. This down here is a very baby, very juvenile, Anthurium vichii, the king Anthurium. Um, oh God, I've had this for years. I bought it as a tiny, tiny little baby. And it's still quite a small baby because I have since learned, like I've grown a lot of Anthuriums from seeds now and I've sort of learned what they like, but it took a while. <laughs> so that's still a baby. And back here, this is a new hybrid. It's a cross between a Philodendron Gloriosum and a Vericosum. And it's a stunning plant. I do not understand why this cross hasn't been done years ago over here this is a fairly like it's not an expensive plant at all but it's stunning i love it philodendron subhastatum absolutely beautiful and through here oh and that's philodendron lupinum <laughs> that is genuinely very difficult to grow nicely it's very hard to size up i haven't got the hang of it and this is a hoya polyneura out of variegated beautiful plant love hoya polyneura and look i did take a cutting from it and it's got new growth i've been waiting for that that's wonderful there's just a rex begonia here there's quite a few other things african violets um this is a gloriosum ouch columnia um i'll put that on the screen as well really pretty plant really super pretty variegated and here I've got some anthuriums. I've got most of my anthuriums in that other cabinet in the uh, greenhouse in the laundry. That was in the first tour, but I really love these ones. These have got red, red, red petioles and some red in the leaves. So very excited about those ones. Down here I actually have some trees. These are, and some African violets. But these are mostly propagations or seed grown, I should say. Lily pilly trees. Um, they're obviously they're edible these look like yeah these are more of the persimmons um but there's lily pillies in here they're thriving lily pillies are so easy to grow from seed i highly recommend giving that a crack the only thing about lily pillies is that when they're young they're super frost tender so the frost doesn't tend to kill them but it's it keeps uh burning off all the new growth and you just keep getting set back and set back and set back so i highly recommend for the first few years of growing lily pillies that you just put a bit of clear um, greenhouse plastic over the top over winter if you get frost. It will save you much heartache. <laughs> Up here, one of my favorite begonias, Amphioxus. Just look at that. It looks like it should be poisonous. Um, it's so gorgeous, not poisonous at all. Amphioxus refers to the pointed both ends top and bottom of the leaves being pointed like that and then it's got these gorgeous red spots it's such a cool plant love it in here there's some weirdos there's a this is a very small strawberry shake strawberry shake who's another one that's very very slow growing and this guy that's just a weirdo that's a philodendron tenu cross plowmanii and why is it pink i don't know why it's pink it's not meant to be. If somebody knows, please enlighten me. Up here, one of my favourite philodendrons, just a good old philodendron Dean McDowell. So this is another gloriosum cross. So that guy is a cross between the philodendron gloriosum, and this is the original form that we have in Australia, that we've had in Australia for many years, as compared to the white vein which is this plant down here. So I don't think the white vein is the parent of the um, Dean McDowell. I think it's the, the original form with um, far less prominent veins. Still a beautiful plant though. Absolutely gorgeous plant. A little bit of pink around the edges of the leaf and on the back of the leaf and petiole. It's a bit hard to see. Oh, it's so frustrating. I had to turn these grow lights off. Anyway, that's a beautiful plant, um, the Dean McDowell. And there's two propagations and a mother plant in here of that guy. And you can see the sheer size of this. Well, you actually really can't. Here, this Amphioxus is kind of going crazy here, which is fabulous. I'm going to propagate that soon. 
I propagate lots of things, so I just have to have room in my boxes. Um, back here we've got a painted lady, philodendron painted lady, which is much more slow growing than I had anticipated. And this fella here is, um, I'm very excited about. This is a yellow variegated tie constellation, such a beautiful plant. Um, I got this relatively cheaply because it's just a new propagation. They're still um, not that common here. Now this one is a an Alocasia Friedeck and it's such a beautiful plant. But I don't know what's happened to it. <laughs> I actually think I may have forgotten to water it. So it had three beautiful leaves. It's now got one beautiful leaf, one shitty dead leaf. <laughs> And one leaf that is probably on its way out, or at least the white parts are. I That's should... the guts of what's in here. Um, there are more things that I haven't shown you, but that's that's most of it. And I'm really, really happy with how it's looking now. It's just so much... Again, I'm sorry about the light, but it's just so much nicer now having some space and being able to see the plants and all the plants able to get light. That's um, that's really good, and also I've cleaned cleaned up the floor and all the spaces, and it's just so much nicer to be in there. This is how I get uh, heat to this greenhouse, and also to the bigger greenhouse. So this is just a incubator, <laughs> just a really cheap, um, super reliable hexagonal incubator for uh, poultry eggs. Anyway, it's a remarkably effective way to warm a smaller greenhouse. It really wor works really well. It's very energy efficient again. And the plants love it. You can, I mean, you can see, you can see they love it. These are warmth loving plants, both the, the house plants and the tropical plants in here. Um, this plant here also got burnt by that light. So the lights are very strong. <laughs> Um, for cheap lights they are very they're very powerful these are the 20 watt ones that are so again they just all connect up and um, are all on one cable or on one plug so one plug does all of those lights but yeah it's it's a bit frustrating that they um, strobe so badly and I can't actually show you this greenhouse with a bit more light Right, friends that is your blooming lot for today I'm afraid um, this has turned into a really long video I just I don't know I'm a bit addicted to my plants and I can't stop talking about them and showing you them anyway thank you so much for joining us again um, it's Sunflower Hill me and the kids and all the creatures and plants um, I really hope you've enjoyed this second half of the tour of my house plants I certainly love showing them to you so thank you very much for joining us if you wouldn't mind um, giving this video a like, that would be absolutely fabulous. It'd be fabulous. Thank you very much for the fabulousness. Um, and if you are not subscribed already, I'd love it if you could consider doing that, please. Just tap the little subscribe button down the bottom. Um, and right at the end of this video, if you watch the end, like the, there'll be a link to the first part of this tour in case you missed that and there'll be a link to a different video um, so thank you all for joining us I've really enjoyed chatting in the comments too thank you all for um, everyone who's commented I really would love to hear your thoughts and appreciate a bit of a chat in the comments all right I'm gonna go now and edit this and actually get it get it out it's been a while all right thank you all so much for joining me hooroo and it's hooroo from him. <laughs>